In this video, I'm going to show you how to change the look and feel of a Qualtrics um, um, survey. This is based on a survey I built in prior videos, primarily the introduction or overview of Qualtrics video that I have on my channel in my Qualtrics playlist. Um, you see there's a various options over here on the side. One of them here is look and feel. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And you see that it's got various options, first of all, from themes, okay? Now, um, you can look through various options. There's some associated with my university. You can change it to look um, like one of the options here. Okay, you can see what that is going to look like. And the, or you can just have a blank theme which doesn't have any anybody's um, images or anything like that on it. So that's something that you can play with. The next thing that you can do is you can use, you can um, play with the layout, what things look like. Let's go to the future page here so you can see what this looks like. Um, this is the um, first option here is they call simple. Okay, and has certain features that aren't supported. This is for this is really helpful. It's the it looks as simplest on the screen, least problematic on a cell phone, that kind of thing. But it does not include these options, which I do have in this survey. So I'm not going to include that here. So it's giving me um, this option, which is called flat. It also has an option called medium. If I again move on here to my first real question. You can see what that looks like. Okay. Or it has what it's called classic. I'm going to go to my next page. You can see what that looks like. And then they're all very similar to each other. So I'd probably just stay with the original one here. Then, um, so those aren't the ones that are most informative in terms of how this survey is going to work. Um, what I do like to play with sometimes, however, is the stuff in the general. The next button by default is just this arrow to the right. You can see it right here. And um, there are other options, um, but um, really you would have to upload something into here. The main thing that you might want to use is maybe use fixed text, something like that. Okay, if you want to use fixed text, then what do you do? You type it in here. Okay, so that, that's an option that you can type that in here. The same with a back button. You can change it to fixed text and write it in here, or you can use the standard arrow. The progress bar is also something that's very commonly used. I think it's helpful because it gives people an idea of when they're going to be done. You know, sometimes surveys go on and on and people never know when they'll be finished. So there's these various options here. Without text, there's a basic bar you'll see up here. Okay. And um, it gives them an idea of how many pages through it they are. With text includes the, the percentage, okay? And with verbose text, um, gives you the survey completion, so it's a little more of an explanation for them. Um, generally, you know, I, I like this one, but it just depends on what you like. Any of those are fine. And then you can decide whether you want it to be at the top or the bottom. I usually put it at the bottom. I think it's more visible there. It's less likely to get lost. Um, I think, at the bottom. So that's where I typically put it. And then down here, you can set whether you want sort of many questions per page. If you haven't put page breaks in already, it allows you to do that. It allows you to put in or create a header um, that would go at the top. Maybe you want um, the survey on you know, the name of the survey or your contact information. If there's some reason you want some kind of a header up there, you can add it in there. And then um, you can put a footer at the bottom as well. You see, I have to scroll down a little bit to see it here. So you can do that either way. Also, by the way, this preview screen lets you see how it's going to be um, 
on a cell phone as opposed to a computer. Depending on the age of your respondents, they're probably mostly doing that on a cell phone realistically. So that's that, this general button is something I do often play with. The style has to do with the default colors and so forth that you're going to use, fonts, contrast, and so forth. Um, so you see you have those various options here, okay? That you can play with those things. You see the color that comes up right here. Um, maybe I want blues, okay? And and then it'll, it automatically change the other one to match with it. So you can you can play with that. Maybe if there's colors that that you know work with your organization or so forth. Okay, foreground contrast, something you can play with. And um, I don't know in what situ situations this is more or less visible. It's barely visible when I change that to me. Um, question spacing. Again, um, comfortable, um, spreads things at a nice visual distance, compact. You can't see it too well here, but it does. Let's go to one that's a page that's all got a little bit more on it. Maybe here, let's see what ends up happening. The compact versus the comfortable. Just a tiny bit of movement. It's really hard to see the difference. Extended is more space between things. Just barely. You don't see a whole lot of difference really between them. Size of your question and answer text. I think this is something that can be really helpful if you want to make something a little bit bigger for some reason. And this isn't something I've used. I don't know a lot about that um, as well as that. Um, this is the background photo that it's put here. Okay, is my default so you can change or remove um, if you're using that particular style that has the background folder. So that's the brief look and feel. The other elements that are related, I'm not going to save those, are over here under options, this little thing right here. Um, those also affect the way the things looks and feels, okay? General, um, this is going to, uh, this will be something um, that that if by default, if you were to do it, the social media distribution link up under distributions, this wording may be, uh, may have, um, be included. Um, you can put this to show them the, what question number they're on. You don't really need to. Maybe you want to. So they might comment in the end and say, question three, I wanted to expand on what I said or was problematic because, but I don't use that a whole lot. I do use this responses more. And one of the things that I use most often in, in this section is the back button. See by default it's turned off. If you turn it on, it allows this, the respondents to go backwards. So if they responded one way to, you know, they responded and they thought, wait a minute, I think I need to change what I said on the prior page. They can do it. Now, sometimes you don't want to do that. You may have ordered your questions in a certain way so that, you know, what they said later doesn't impact what they said earlier. So they can't go back and fix something earlier based on what they said later. So, so that may not be something you want on, or it may be just depending on your situation. That is something that sometimes I will put on. This is here by default. So if they, um, start a link, and then they come back later and they're, you know, from the same um, IP address, same computer, it'll let them back in to finish. Okay, custom error messages. If they skip a question, you can put in requirements into the, to the, your survey that they can't skip a question, a questions required, for example. If that's the case or they respond in a way that you said was invalid, um, I'll have another video on how to require response or require response to be of a certain type. When that's the case, you can, you can put your own message in there. Okay. And these are just things you'd go to your library and upload them into there. Okay. Otherwise it's the default response that's in there. Now, um, if someone just goes halfway through the survey or one question into the survey, what do you want to happen? Do you want that included or do you want that completely deleted? Most of the time we want to include it and use what data we did get, even though we didn't get all the data. So that is the default. 
is that it will record the information. However, you see here there's a delay of one week. So it gives them that time to come back if they want to come back to it to finish it later. They've got whatever time, and of course I can change this. So what you'll see is the day you put out your survey, exactly a week later, there'll be a whole bunch that suddenly show up. Um, as completions, they're not full completions, but as recorded survey responses. Um, because all of the people who started and didn't finish, that one week times out, and now suddenly they're all showing in your data. So that's something to be aware of, okay? So you do want to wait a week if you want all that partial data, unless, or you can make this a shorter time period. Okay, those are the options that you have. Um, so there's a timer associated with it when you download your your results here out of Qualtrics. It's going to tell you um, when they started and ended the survey. Um, and this is just some options related to that. Okay. So how they how that timer works is, is most of the time not something you care about, but it may be once in a while. Okay. Um, so here, this what this does here is it allows your survey to be available essentially forever, for a couple of years anyway, um, to gather data. So um, if you send an email link to somebody and they saw it two years later, they could go in and respond, and that would be added to the data here within Qualtrics, within your data within Qualtrics. If you went and re-downloaded your data at that point, they'd be included. Okay, so that's something that can happen. Um, however, it's often nice to set a specific start and end date so the link will not work before or after that date. Okay, so that's something you can do. And whether an inactive survey, because it's before or after that date, you can put a custom message in or yours, your default. Here into security, um, available to anyone invitation only um, would be only those that you sent um, a personal invite to as opposed to the generic invite okay but available to anyone is what you probably want to do you can get around it going to people you didn't want it to sometimes by turning on a password okay so it goes to anyone here anyone can do it but they have to type in a password to actually complete the survey okay sometimes that is helpful okay if you want to limit who can take a survey. Um, so here, okay, at a referral website, you know, that's only if they went to this website and they got it directly from that specific website would be the only way they could take the survey, okay? Preventing multiple submissions, sometimes you want to do that. If you have something like a drawing for a incentive, for taking the survey, some kind of a reward for taking the survey, you probably want to then click this button, which prevents people from taking the survey multiple times so they can be in there at drawing multiple times or get a multiple prize or something like that. Prevents indexing by default, okay, so it won't show up on Google. And um, <clears throat> so this is something that we typically wouldn't have you if you have some. Um, part of a response is for them to upload files that would be included there, but that's not necessarily the case. Now here's something interesting. You can anonymize responses even without using anonymous links if you use this particular option here. Okay, this last post survey just is sends a thank you um, email to them. By default it has a little thank you screen at the end of any Qualtrics survey but you can set this up so it automatically sends um, them an email and that would work if you were sending personalized emails to them. Um, and a message if they revisit, okay, if they come back a second time, they want to take it a second time, you can give them a message. So maybe you don't want to block them from doing a second time, but you want them to get a message, okay. Um, and then you've got edit triggers. Okay, so right here, click on this add a condition. Okay, so if they said certain thing in the survey, 
then you can send this email to them. So let's suppose you had a question at the end that said, are you willing to participate in further research? Then you can put that question in and if they, and if they selected yes, then it would send them the, this particular email that you have. Okay, so that might be something that would be useful and so forth. Okay, these advanced things aren't used too often. The scoring is really just for if you have a case in which you have, it's more of a test and you're giving them points for various responses, then you can edit that here. Okay, and edit what the points are and you know what's correct and so forth. So that's an overview of editing basically the look and feel and the options here in Qualtrics.